Well, now I want to turn to uh, Tom Watt, uh, Tom uh, Farrell, uh, who is finishing up the, uh, the Tom uh, York uh, Spillane building that Frenchman uh, River Model Works produces. Tom, welcome. Thank you for uh, having me this evening. So the, <clears throat> this evening is uh, part five, the conclusion of the Mickey Spillane, the M Spillane building. Uh, new tracks modeling, watch me build. <clears throat> this is an original O scale kit designed by the legendary kit maker, Thomas York. It's his 50th anniversary kit and it's probably his best kit to date. <clears throat> it's tonight's program regarding this structure is sponsored by the manufacturer Frenchman River Model Works. I urge you to check out their website at frenchmanriver.com. They offer HO, S scale, O scale, 124th scale building kits, boat kits, detail parts, figures, vehicle kits. They exclusively carry Tom York's kits, his old kits now being remanufactured by Frenchman River Model Works. I counted 46 in all on their website. <clears throat> and regarding the boat kits, I personally built a 34 foot lobster boat. We did a video on that. I did a multi-scale rusted hull from Frenchman River and I did a wood, wooden fishing boat, all in O scale. They're just marvelous resin kits. I urge you to check that website out. <clears throat> So um, tonight is the conclusion. I worked like a fiend all day today to get this thing done. <laughs> the paint's still wet. <laughs> this is where we left off uh, last week. And uh, I'll show you where we move forward here. <clears throat> the first thing I did uh, from last week was um, worked on the sidewalk. I had primered it with uh, Tamaya light gray light primer, which is a non-filling primer. Uh, we just went, Father Ron just went over uh, all the different uh, primers available. I prefer that Tamaya. It's a little expensive, but it doesn't do any fill. Then I went back with uh, poly scale and some grays and just, just dabbled different grays on this uh, sidewalk. You can see the different uh, colors here. Concrete is not uh, uniform in color. Fresh concrete is this gray color. Uh, older concrete, sort of a yellowish beige color, but I wanted gray because I wanted to contrast with my limestone. There are a couple of grates on the, uh, we look right here. That's an opening for a cellar. They give you two um, injection molded uh, styrene grates. I uh, primed them with that Tamaya gray. Then I painted them with a flat black with the Tamaya uh, military flat black. And then I weathered them with um, pan pastels, uh, rust, two rust colors, uh, a, a white and a black. And that's the finished look. <clears throat> Next up, I made a modification to the tower. I thought since I was going for an Art Deco look that I would put in stained glass. So I took this, there was a wooden uh, pane here that divided the window. I sawed that out. Actually, I pushed the windows out, started again, sawed this piece out, found online the stained glass, put in a piece of uh, acetate, put the stained glass printout from PowerPoint behind it. And I did it on the uh, the right side and the left side. Give me a, an Art Deco look. This is looking down where the tower, uh, the tower goes in place. You have to saw cut that, those resin walls to fit. I had a, um, first I used a little X-Acto, um, razor saw 
and it wasn't making too much progress. And I got my Dremel out with a saw blade and just hacked away at it. And then I glued it in place. And so the building gear is starting to shape up. Next up was the roof. They provided this wood. I uh, put this wood in, but the thing that they give you a uh, like a cardboard. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. So I used a piece of um, 040 plastic. And um, I shaped this to fit this diameter here. And then I glued it in place. And then I painted everything with Elmer's glue and I sprinkled um, cinders on here, a fine cinder from Woodland Scenics. Then I dripped uh, Woodland Scenics cement on this and soaked it. And then I dribbled a gray ballast from Woodland Scenics on there just to add a little variety. Next up, there was a gap here from the, it goes window, panel, window, panel. There was a gap here and um, I just took a piece of 020 plastic, super glued it in place. I put some filler in there and uh, I guess I don't have a shot of that finish, but I just painted it to match uh, the rest of it. Next, I had to do the cornice. Now they give you strips of resin that are approximately six inches long. Um, I, uh, I made cuts every two inches, which would represent eight feet, because when you're dealing with cut stone, eight feet's about all you can really do without cutting a special block of limestone to, uh, to get anything larger. Plus, the larger it gets, it starts to weigh an enormous amount. So I made these in eight foot increments and um, the cuts are just precise, um, say a 16th of an inch down and effectively looks like they're individual pieces. Well, these two are, but, uh, and I used a little filler here to, uh, to make that joint. <clears throat> the overall effect is they're eight foot pieces though. <clears throat> Next up, how I do the windows. I use this evergreen canopy glue. So I just paint this on with a paintbrush. Then I take my acetate. They have pre-cut uh, acetate. And I just put that in right on there. Um, and I made these window shades, blinds with uh, PowerPoint. I just went online and looked for uh, a lace and colored it a a beige color, and then I drew this line and this circle with PowerPoint and um, painted this black with PowerPoint, made these little windows. And then um, I glued it on with that same canopy glue. And then when it was dry, I took Tester's doll coat uh, in liquid form and I painted the back of the, uh, the window. I wanted this to have some sort of permanence and uh, by sealing the uh, paper it's not going to curl or discolor it basically paints it it soaks through next up there's a fire escape um, without going into great detail it doesn't look like this the fire escape is actually twice as large this was a little mysterious to me you have to cut and cut and glue pieces together to come up with this shape <clears throat> The photographs really came in um, handy to create this fire this fire escape because it's it's not your standard fire escape that uh, I think they bought one from somebody <clears throat> Titchy probably and uh, the photograph saved me on that there it is weathered rusted and there it is in place so the process here is I paint it flat black a ladder, all this mechanism that I had to make. I paint everything flat black. Then I paint it with a, um, a rust wash. Then I go in with pan pastels and rust colors. And then I go in with a pan pastel and a gray. You get a very effective weathered look here. 
It's a simple process. These are the decals that they give you. Um, they recommend that you spray these with dull coat before you uh, cut them up and use them. So per the instructions, I gave this two coats of dull coat. It, it strengthens the decals. It was a great tip because these are very large decals. This is probably three inches by two inches. And they tend to fold on you if you're not careful sliding them off. And if it weren't for the uh, toughness that the dull coat, I might have ruined them. Oh, the other point is um, these are <clears throat> these decals, if you don't paint behind them, you won't see the white. They're clear decals. So they're on white paper here now. So you see all this white uh, lettering. But if you don't paint behind the uh, decal white, you'll see the brick. So what I did is I cut out my, in this case, it's Dexter's Quality 5 Cent Cigar. I cut it out and then I traced, I more or less got it to size here with a permanent magic marker. I outlined where I wanted my paint to go. Then I painted it with an acrylic paint. And then I put on the decal. It's kind of a clever way to get white behind your decal. Here's the model um, more or less done. There's my stained glass windows. This is an Art Deco look. Um, this is dimensional cut limestone with a, what we call a rock face. We call this the natural complement to brick. There's just enough gold on here that it doesn't look gaudy, at least in my opinion. And uh, these window shades are a nice touch. Simple thing you can do on PowerPoint. I just went in and looked for 1920 window shades, brought them into PowerPoint, sized them properly, and put this little string and circle on here. Same with down here. <clears throat> they give you a decal that says uh, Dixie Beer. Well, on my train layout, I have Fort Pitt Beer in Turtle Creek, so I wanted it to... Uh, I didn't want to have a Southern beer on the side of my wall. This decal came from them. These are uh, simply PowerPoint printouts that I cut out, sanded the back of them, painted them with Elmer's glue, put them in place. And then with a very wide brush, I soaked the front of them with uh, water. And they basically conform to the brick, just like a decal. That's how I did this Fort Pitt this lucky strike and this headache pill. This is an actual decal from the kit. That's the same technique I use for this beer. It's what for dinner, this little joke. <clears throat> this is paper. I sanded the back of the paper, painted it with Elmer's glue, put it on place, took a wide brush, soaked it with water, and it conformed to the brick. Pretty much the same quality as the decal up here. They do provide you with decals. I just wanted a little uh, variation. There's up close of the fire escape, the window shade, the stained glass, the decal, the uh, cornice. <clears throat> this is one single piece of resin. I primed it gray painted it brown, touched it up with gray paint, and then put pan pastels on it. Slightly out of focus, sorry. There's the overall of the finished building. I mean, this, I don't know that these photographs do this thing justice, but I swear to God, this is of museum quality. It is just an amazing model. You pick it up and hold it, and you look at all the hand-carved stonework, brickwork, all the ornate Art Deco materials. Um, it is a gorgeous kit. And as Jeff pointed out last week, even though it is a relatively expensive kit, it took me um, 
five solid weeks of working on this. It It's not a shake the box kit. It doesn't fall together with four walls and a roof. There are a lot of pieces, a lot of different materials. And um, I urge you to give this one a try. It's probably Tom York's best kit. He claims that it's his most complicated kit. I claim it's the best kit I've ever worked. So thank you for the past uh, five weeks and uh, urge you to check out Frenchman River Model Works and this kit in particular. Any questions? Any uh, questions? Hi, Tom, this is Greg. Yeah. Um, I know I missed a week and maybe I you covered it then, but the uh, roof for the uh, the little round part that sticks out, is that no. one casting or? Yes, yeah, it's one solid resin casting. I... Okay, nice. It looks great, but I know he can do that with with his talent. <laughs> yeah, I uh, like I said, I I primed it with Tamaya light primer, and then I uh, painted it brown with a rattle can, and then I took uh, dry brushes of various colors of gray. And just dry brushed it. Mm -hmm. And then I took some pan pastels and touched it up here and there. And then I finish coated it with dull coat. So it's it looks uh, fantastic. Permanent. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, Tom, hey, this Tom. is Bob. You used uh, canopy glue in one of your sections here. Uh, just a general question are all canopy glues the same? You know? I think there's a brand name that's called canopy i don't um i don't know that they're all the same but uh the one i use is is called evergreen evergreen, evergreen, evergreen scale evergreen. models canopy glue um they're probably different brands this it's not elmer's glue i can tell you that yeah yeah because if you get a little on the window you don't see it Tom, you did a beautiful job uh, building the kit. I can't thank you enough for all the hard work you put into this one, and it shows. So thank you so very much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. We'll look forward to your build of the next Tom York kit that's produced by Frenchman River. This fall. <laughs> this fall. Uh, yeah. But thanks so very much for doing it, and hope your knees get better right quick. Thank you.